Welcome, welcome. Greetings, greetings, market rebels. Welcome to this week's sector situation. I'm Wayne. Partner Ryan is wrapping up the weekly market outlook slash overview. It is Sunday, February 26th. It's about, I guess, 20 minutes in front of one on the East Coast. And we need to flash our trusty disclaimer, and then we can flash our trusty intellectual property rights notice, and then we can be on our way. Wouldn't mind taking a quick look at that for us. Thank you very much. And then there you have it. This is the plan program. As longtime watchers know, I tend to go stream of consciousness a little bit, just probably never going to change the way I am. I've got so many things that I'd like to share, uh, things that develop in the market that might help you now or in the future, in my opinion. So I try to hit those and it doesn't always come out like a super uh, organized program, but that's the nature of things. Um, just want to do a quick recap and then we'll talk about all these, which I'll leave off screen so we don't have to have that in our way. Let me switch out of that and over to a different screen. So the next screen should be screen four share. So <clears throat> screen four is hopefully this, hopefully you're seeing my grid and we'll get into this briefly, but then we'll get out of it because what I wanted to do is just talk about the market last week. And I think it, I think it uh, more or less was worth paying attention to the concerning signs from the prior week. We had said that, that the way things ended up the prior week were concerning. Really, there was no doubt about it. It didn't even really give us much of a chance to think about being bullish on Tuesday, the first trading day of the week, and then you could see where we ended. And that's really the quick recap. I spent a lot of time on a lot of things I'm going to leave off here in sector situation uh, because we talked about those in market, I mean, a macro measure. So I just want to note that I think at this point, the, the summary, I guess, if I could come up with a quick one for this week would be the major index ETFs that we chart and a lot of the big name stocks, big weights from Apple on down, <clears throat> they're all near what you would, I guess, safely call key support levels. Uh, in this case, right, with the SPY, we're near the downtrend line of the bear market. We're trying to see is what AJ's kind of popularized. Will we see some role reversal? Will this bounce here after this test and coming back to it, which is sort of what we thought would potentially happen last week if the market took that turn for the worse, and it did. So now the bulls, I think, have the pressure on them. And that's really what I'm going to concentrate on in sector situation. I'm going to just relay that virtually every sector came under pressure. And if you take a quick note of those, they're not all in, they're not all in, let's see if I can get this out of my way here. They're not all in 30, the 30s on the RSI. Some of those are in the 30s, but most are in the 40s. And that means that there's more potential to drop. So uh, let's take a look at it methodically. Let's take a look at energy. So with respect to energy, let me get this over here. Energy, you can see that we broke, I believe this is energy. Yep. This broke down, right? This broke down below support. It then tested the 200 there on Wednesday, held, tried to bounce, hit the res now what would be the resistance line, <clears throat> which was our support line, and then went back down towards the 200 and they turned it around again. So it stuck beneath trend, if you will, beneath support. And it only really has the 200 day left, 41 on, on the RSI. Okay, so the final wrap will be, I'll just talk about this, it's off screen because it just gets too busy. But basically from the cycle stuff I like to look at, and this is what helps me make my judgment call are on who is in control, bulls or bears firmly, or is it a mixed bag baby, uh, Austin Power style, that kind of thing. Well, I would say at this point, right, it's been, I guess, tenuously held control to this point by bulls. But now, right, I think you're, the bulls are, are clinging to very little in terms of control, right? I think breaking down below here, which we said this level in here is a big deal, which happens to be where your 200 is, <clears throat> excuse me, breaking down below there probably opens the door to 
really uh, gap closure type con uh, considerations or factors that you normally would not keep on your radar because too much time has passed. But when you're heading back towards them, if the market itself is sliding, it could be a real risk off type of scenario. If, 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 if things really all start coming apart at the seams, and there's, that would, that would put a lot of downside uh, in front of us in energy. So that's concerning. I think if you break below 200 or you could say Wednesday's low, but the, these, this is very close to critical, a critical level that 82 ish level we talked about before. So that's definitely something to keep your eyes on short term SMA is rolling over not quite oversold on the daily and most definitely not oversold on the weekly charts either. So that is a concern. Okay. And now I want, did I move those? Nope. I've got to move these for better viewing. So excuse me for one second. So I can cover these with the larger charts, but bottom line, we'll keep going through methodically technicals on XLK, right? This would be the technology sector. These are at right look at the former highs in here and you can see where we were you're near there you're near some of these highs here where you hesitated and you seem destined at this point right there's probably another flat line we'd probably have to fairly say there's a flat line near one let's just call it 134 say 50 uh not too far down but you could see that the the big area here would be the 50 in gold, the rust colored 150 and the 200 kind of all right, all just a ganglion of those bigger ones, all bunched up 200 there in, in purple. So that would be the big test again, on the verge of rolling over right there. Uh, so there's that's the technology sector. And you you all know what that means. That's very important in the modern market communications, right? All these lines that are, you'll see on here are the lines that we had on our grid. And you could see we talked about, I think the last week or maybe two weeks that I can't remember how far back since we added these lines, but uh, broke down below it, tried to come back up and get above there, wasn't able to, then took out the lows right there. And then you're, you're really trying to cling to the 200. Right, you've got a 43 RSI, so there's still more room to fall. In terms of uh, control, I would say, look, if, if, if Meta gives way in communications and starts to close that gap, the last bit of bull control will be gone. Right now, the bulls have are, are clinging to a little bit of control. I would say at this point, the bears have more control, and there's a little bit of bull hope, but it could be dashed very easily. Uh, so... Right. The bulls, again, are on. Th these are all pretty much in the same where the bulls are the ones, I think, that have the uh, have the onus on them to step up. They don't step up. Then the way things are looking to me, you definitely head lower. Uh, you head lower if they risk more te technical damage and they don't start supporting this stuff soon. So I would say they need to start supporting it sooner. News needs to develop that really changes maybe what uh, most big time market participants are thinking at the moment. But this all looks rough to me. Not sure why this line may have moved on us, but it looks like one of the lines moved on us. So let's add another line in here quickly drawn. I'm not going to try to win any style points here, but you could maybe drop one in there like that. And you seem to have lost <clears throat> the trend 43 and RSI more room to fall. Could you drop down? I, I think I have a couple of little little trades in the financials as well on the bear side in UOA Pro rolling over. Uh, these short term SMAs are rolling over, and you know once you kind of get to this type of a juncture, uh, you might get that support the first time around. There you go, um, right above the 200 there. It supported last time. You get this big pop, but eventually there was a whole another leg that went down. So we, we will see. They did hold above the 50. But there's room to follow. Things seem like they're on the verge of getting started in a bigger way. You've lost that short-term intermediate trend. Um, so again, I think the bulls are the ones with the pressure on them to come in there and support that. Real estate, another one that's along with XHB. We've been scratching our heads, like how are they able to do this in a way? We know they can do it. <laughs> Just that it, even all these years later, it still blows my mind that they can take something that 
it's incredibly obvious that it, real estate really does seem to be in big trouble and yet still put together a rally from 33 to almost 43, but not quite, but that's still a very solid rally. <clears throat> You're still talking almost 30% rally off the lows in only uh, four months or so. So to have a 30% run in four months out of an in, uh, sorry, a sector ETF, it's still pretty darn impressive, I think, in the face of evidence that suggests that shouldn't happen, in my opinion. But <clears throat> again, so much for my opinion. That's why we don't trade my opinion. We just trade what the charts tell us to the best of our ability. And the last one left is the 100 SMA. Otherwise, everything is above all of the north. RSI approaching oversold more so than other sectors. So will they be able to use the 100? And looks like there's probably a solid flat line somewhere near the 100 as well. And again, my assumption, absent news, is that they'll probably find support the first time down. They'll probably put some sort of a little rally attempt together at the very least. And then you see where it goes from there. And that's always been my, my way of looking at it. Um, and so we'll see, right, if they're, if they're able to hold this. Kind of like they did here, right? There's a, let's just, just to explain what I mean. There's the rust colored 150, touched it once, once held, touched it twice, held probably a flat line right in there, right from prior resistance <clears throat> that was effectively support, but it couldn't break out above the 200 day there and then eventually went into failure mode. So that's why I've always tried to say like with SMAs, I look at those more as support resistance, more as a detour than a, a critical a level, like a long-term level where there's been just support many times over and resistance many times over. I favor the latter rather than the SMA. But the reason why we have to include the SMAs is because if you're trading in the short term, they certainly can provide support and resistance just for a, a, even on a temporary basis. And that might be important on a short term trade where that's the most you get. You've got to roll down. You've got to trim. You've got to do both, whatever. And if it doesn't keep going, get out of your role. Um, but that's that's the bottom line on that one. I think it's very clear that this is risking leaving this channel, right? So in the long run, this could look like just another corrective channel that corrected the downtrend in inside of a larger downtrend. And I could, again, I could, this is, I'm, I'm just a big believer in channels and, and lines. I know that's old school, but uh, that's something to me that is, still matters. Not perfectly drawn, but you get the idea. Right, in terms of these channels that you, you corrective channels you were in, and now you're rolling, <laughs> excuse me, rolling down. And excuse me, notice how you roll through this one, then they try to bring it back up again one more time. It fails, right? So that's what you've got now that you're near support here. You know, you've got to be on guard for that. That's why I think it's a good time to mention that this week I'd be all about super discipline. You know, unless you see lows <clears throat> being just cracked mercilessly and no bids and and it's just obvious that the bulls are giving up. I would, if they're if they're trying to cre create rallies, especially with what we've been seeing with zero, zero DTE, I would definitely uh, be a singles person. I would be a quick trimmer. A quick trim in my book, I'd probably harp on this too much at Market Rebellion, but my idea of a quick trim is you're in a 10 lot, let's assume just a 10 lot for make it easy. I would trim one or two when I get to my first target level or maybe my second level if, if momentum was really strong and let it go um, and get to your second level. Take a little money off the table and that that will psychologically, I think, help a lot of folks because then you know that even if they take it back to unchanged on you a day or two later from where you got in, you're probably still eking out a small win and you're not getting frustrated. And that you know that's what you don't want. You don't want to get frustrated because remember the market is a source of opportunity. So we don't wanna get frustrated with the source of opportunity. We wanna be able to really approach it with a positive mindset as much as possible that, hey, this is, op I'm opportunistic. This has a lot of potential to deliver some really good stuff for me over time. I don't wanna get frustrated and walk away for a while. I wanna try, if there's no trading there, that's one thing, but if there's opportunity, you wanna be there and you wanna to try to capitalize on it. But here you can see XHB related to XLRE, brought it up for that reason, right? Getting towards the bottom of the channel, which happens to be the 50 SMA. 
you're only at 46 there on your RSI. And I would say, look, <clears throat> this is another one where there is still some hope for bulls if it holds here and can rally. But if you lose this and the month ends poorly, you've got more room to drop. That's probably the end of the bull control because it's very little bull control is there at the moment. <clears throat> that could be dashed. Now, we've also been charting lumber. We may as well chart lumber quickly, take a look at what's been happening with lumber. And you can see last week we looked at it and here you go, right? You're, you came back in even further, I believe. And you had that little Friday action, but you came in right back even further towards the levels we talked about. This doesn't look rip roaring like it once did. Fortunately, we did start to get some yellow flags sent up, little yellow flares or whatnot sent up there when this started cracking. But for a while there, <clears throat> another thing that was really, I think, defying logic. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, worth bringing the TNX in, even though we cover this in macro measure, just to show you what yields have been doing, what that chart looks like. You know, in the long term, you can look at the purple line, that's your 200 SMA. The long term picture is still higher on yields, even though, again, we were fortunate enough to be ready, I think, in time to be concerned about where this was when it was up here. But now, right, it's back. It's still flashing 66 on daily RSI after the run that it's had. Maybe it will hesitate, right, somewhere near this level, which was sort of a resistance level right in here with this closing high and some of these candles in here. That might be enough to maybe send it back down. We'll see, but for now, they're trying to continue to move this thing up. And the SM8 shorties are all now upsloping and crossing the longer terms and the longer terms are generally upsloping. So for now, this doesn't look bad. I, uh, if, I'm, if I'm thinking about housing and things like that, I just don't see how this is some sort of a wonderful development, right? That rates are kind of being sticky and aren't all that far away, far that, far away from a four handle again and on the on the 10 year and you're not that far away from here and so that would be pretty darn uh, consi uh concerning I think if you're a bull so that kind of covers that housing area and it kind of in order <clears throat> excuse me rather than me coming back to it like I typically do hopefully that helps a little bit but that's all challenged now and I think there's good reasons why here's your healthcare space. Uh, I covered UNH um, in macro measures to show that some of the big name stocks that are heavyweight mega caps are in trouble um, or near support where they need to hold. Let's put it that way. Uh, and this will be another one with a gap, right? XLV. This is pretty much done. I mean, the bulls kind of took the last train for the coast. This, this consolidation that was in broke down. You can see you're below the 200. Short terms rolling over, even the 50 rolling over precipitously, right? So this is really not looking all that good. Kind of interesting because it was doing really well as a in earlier, uh, I mean, I should say early in the overall rally, in the early stages of the bottom being put in the market, it was doing really well, but it's struggled. So that defensive, there's defensive names, if you will, they're not really drawing of uh, the bid anymore. And even though the market does seem to be getting more risk off, they still don't seem to care about going into here. So that, I don't know how you can like that. I, I mean, it, it it could stage something crazy like we saw a couple of weeks ago when I said, I just don't see the immediate buying and then they bought it. <laughs> they bought a lot of stocks. Uh, it was almost funny. I mean, in a way where I'm like, well, this really left me scratching my head. I don't know what that was all about still, but they came in on after... I recorded on Sunday and they bought a lot of big name stocks right up. And I'm thinking, this is uh, th this is amazing. Uh, that was, to me, a real anomaly, but it happens. <clears throat> it's the market. Anyway, this does not look good and bulls are, they're done. I mean, they're, they, they've they lost control. They need to really, I mean, they've got a lot of work to do to really reestablish control of that market right there. <clears throat> so we'll see. But to me, that doesn't look very promising at the moment. I would be, I would need to see a lot out of that to become more of an intermediate term bull with the way that chart looks. XLP, 
Now, note that that's at, that was at 34 on the RSI, so it's getting there on terms of oversold. Maybe we will see something out of XLV. But XLP, this is very similar, right? It was It's more of a defensive situation. Um, this is hanging in there a little bit better than XLY. Has room to fall. But cyclically, the way that I like to look at it, I feel like this too, all this is really needs to do is crack here, and then the bulls will have lost but very, very, very little control they have over it. So I think bears are mostly in control of this for now. There's no SMAs below where we are. And there's a gap down here. And we all, you know, I, I'm a big believer in don't worry about the gap after five days, including the gap day. Uh, I don't really worry about gaps anymore. I do start to bring gaps back on my radar and I'll just drop a little white ellipse in there. I do bring them back in when you're near, you're starting to trend in that direction and you are at risk of losing key support. And I would say, look, that level somewhere around there, let's call it just 71, um, we'll say 71 and a half, just to throw a number out there. But right near here, right, there's not a lot of support once you crack below. You can see this was a really significant, strong run higher. And that's where the gap, there was a breakaway gap basically. And that's where things could come back to if there's a real risk off scenario. If the bulls just step away, they give up on the narrative, at least for now, that, hey, the Fed's done, happy days are here again, then, excuse me, but uh, then maybe it's different. But until, you know, and until that, I, I think that odds, if they take out these lows, like right, the odds are, let's just say below 71. Below 71, this thing's on its way back to here. Not a big drop in dollar terms, but just visually would be a big drop. But certainly staples are not looking good. Uh, maybe Costco helps that out. I don't know. I think they might be reporting soon. Some retailers might be reporting soon. Uh, maybe that gets helped by that. I don't know. But discretionary, this also cracked below. I'm not sure why this isn't picking up my, my support lines that I drew in a week or two ago on a lot of these saying, look, it's just getting, these are all getting cracked, but that's got been cracked. Even if I revise the line to there, right? The XLY at 45 on the RSI, that got cracked back the week before. Short-term SME is rolling over below the 200 there in purple. 150 respectively are the only things left <clears throat> from SMAs. But discretionary never really got it going the way that I think the staples did. Um, they did get it going in a way that, you know, you can't deny that, but they were really late to rally and they didn't really have that second oomph to them the way that when the XLP rally started, it put together, I think, a nice little further attempt, but these never did. That sort of tells you that it's still a little more defensive, right? And the mindset out there overall that people are looking at things, at things defensively. So this right now to me, there is still a little bit of hope for bulls on a few different views that I have, but I think if you lose the 50 there at a closing basis, especially at the end of a week, uh, forget it. Like that at that point, that what little bull grasp is left or grip is left will then be gone again. So this will effectively turn out to be right this a fake false breakout, head fake, whatever you want to call it. But they they really again bull trap. Uh, I thought there might be, and maybe there still will be another leg somehow that they pull out of their hat higher before they really put the, their best trap in. <laughs> but, but this is maybe a trap that's, uh, maybe that's it, right? It might be the only one we see, but it certainly could be a trap in retrospect. We've been talking about that for a long time, so none of us are surprised by that. You, this is a great example, right, of clinging to former resistance that's now potentially support. So here's your transports, resistance there, resistance there. Uh, back in here, you can see that it was respected right near that orange sort of fib retracement of 38.2. Clinging, clinging, clinging. And then if it lets this go, right, then you visit that that ganglion of SMAs down there that will be forming all the larger ones like the 50, the 100, 150 and 200. That would be our next stop if they let this go. Naturally, there will be a few flat lines in here and there, but 47 on your RSI. Um, again, much like but still has, there's still a little control, hope for bulls. But I think with any more weakness down below the 50, that's, you know, that's 
really mostly gone. And then by the time you get to the 200, probably the 200, 150, and 100 are all in the same vicinity, very close. And you lose those, and then what have you got, right? You're barely off the lows. You really, it's hard to argue that bulls are still in control when you're barely off of lows. So again, all these things are sort of at risk of completely giving it up, right? Completely giving up the the, the positive technicals of any kind that would say, yeah, there's a still, still a great chance for bulls. So the bulls are... The, the, the test, I think, should be upon us this week. I, I think the test has started uh, last week, and you got to see how things react now. But I think the, the onus or pressure remains on the <clears throat> on the bulls to not risk any more technical damage. And we said this at the time in some areas that, look, when the bulls do what they did, and they don't do themselves any favors uh, when they leave gaps like this uh, on the way up, because... Uh, that if you do have a failure, that almost ensures you're at least going back down to there. And again, I ignore them until the, I think they start mattering. Now, if you start losing these SMAs, right, then then I would say, look, things if things get exacerbated to the downside in a sell-off, which they often do, then this is probably odds on that they close this thing. You know, so that would be, that would start working into my calculus if, well, let's just pull a flatline number out. Let's say they... Crack 77. They crack 77. I mean, there's very little, I think there's a couple flat lines here or there, but there's very little really that's going to stop that in a kind of a capitulatory phase from, from reaching that level. <clears throat> so that would be your basic materials. They did have that amazing rally. They're at 46 on RSI, very little grip left. I don't know how they pulled this off, but they did, right? So uh, that's an amazing candle if you think about it to go from the 100 to the 50, given you know how this thing normally trades and given what was happening in the market. But something drove that. I didn't. I don't have. I, I don't have an inclination, or should an inkling, I should say, on, on what it was. But something might have driven that. Maybe it was expiration related. I don't know. Industrials. There's the. We've been talking about this ascending triangle. And it broke down, and now it's going back towards the 50 in gold, towards our former uh, support line, now maybe a resistance line there in orange. So again, if that thing cracks there, you're looking at probably, right, there's probably a support line right near, a flat line right near the 100 day. But that would be your next destination, right, if that, if, if that low gets taken out from late last week, especially on a closing basis. But it was interesting how... I think XLB and XLI tr tried to somehow resuscitate or whatnot, re-energize in the midst of uh, early ugliness. New low got made, but they didn't let it close there in the in the utilities. So again, another defensive sector that's been struggling much like XLV. Normally they head into there. Well, they maybe did a little bit, I guess, towards the end of it. But overall, the, it's very hard to like this technically. Uh, maybe you could make a case, well, hey, there's there's uh, an RSI divergence is positive. It's already, you know, below 40 on the RSI. That's all true. Uh, and did, hey, look, it just closed the gap. That's similar. Maybe it's ahead of a lot of these other sectors. And maybe it is. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to not ruling any of that out. But look at the down sloping SMAs, right? It's got to fight its way all the way through there. Usually higher rates are not a friend to utilities. So the way that rates look, you know, I don't know how <clears throat> how this sustains a rally. Maybe I'm dead wrong, but we'll see. But I just I don't think this looks good. Personally, I think the bears are almost fully in control here of, of this sector. And the best thing we can say is that it's one of the ones that's closer to becoming officially oversold as per the RSI. Otherwise, how can you like it, right? Like if you look at this. 60 to 78 you know we're we're maybe like six points away from the low while we're 12 points away from the high so it's very hard to argue well the bulls are still in control there either right so that's just another one so if you look at it in total right we'll still look at a few more but if you look at it it's hard to say based on the sector view that hey this market looks really good right now it, it, it looks like it's a challenge market which i think is what it is and again i think the onus is on the bulls to step in and make sure that more tactical damage doesn't happen. Otherwise, selling begets more selling, and you usually these things end in a rout, and uh, that means exacerbated lower levels than you'd expect. 
um, maybe that happens. You know, maybe that's ultimately healthy for the market. Very interesting, right? We always talk about SMH, big deal, semiconductors. You know, I have a bearish idea on <clears throat> in NVIDIA, in UOA Pro right now. I'm not sure if Greg put one on Rebel Pit, but the bearish ideas are in place just in case because of NVIDIA's gap. But naturally, right, that being such a big mega cap, being important to, to semis, <clears throat> If that comes into where it has before <laughs> midweek and falls, especially if SMH falls, I think the 50 is going to come in right near this former flat line at near 230 here in SMH. So I think that losing that puts it back into the triangle. And then you pretty much can start chalking this up to maybe that was a false breakout, false trend change attempt. Uh, ultimately, uh, maybe that was a bull trap, all the other things you could throw at it, right? All the other labels, but this kind of looks like your channel. Um, and then ultimately, you know, right, cracking beneath here is, is the end. That's really where the 200, 150, and 100 would be waiting anyway. So this, this certainly looks rough to me. You know, this is where I think it pays to just keep going back to your charts, right? Cycling through them because... A lot of things showed up. Oops, on the a lot of things showed up early in early February um, as overdone, and we looked at those percentages of stocks above the fifty, above the twenty, above the two hundred. We looked at all those consistently, and they were all telling us, "Hey, this is really stretched." Or I think these are extreme readings, and you can see that with every little attempt higher, um, SMH continued to lose. Uh, you know, the RS in terms of RSI strength readings. You continue to worsen. So you just get this uh, persistent negative divergence and eventually that mattered. Now your SMAs are all rolling over. You're near 50 on the RSI. So you certainly have more room to fall. There could be a whole nother leg if this gets taken out and then the 50 gets taken out. So we'll have to see. But if there's a whole nother leg, that probably means that they're pulling NVIDIA down or NVIDIA down with them. And this is, you. The, if you didn't chart it, lab, didn't look at it last week, it's got this big gap. and like like we said many times, Ryan and I did some studies on this, and it turns out that most gaps that are going to fill anytime soon will fill within five days, including the gap day. And if they don't, then we'd stop worrying about the gap being a factor. So this has two more days to get started, at least doing that. Um, but it, so far, it's gap plus two, two more days. But if it's going to happen, it should happen soon. So keep your eyes out. That would be like a special note. I'd keep your eyes out on NVIDIA and SMH. And if those are cracking, that usually isn't really a good sign for the, uh, that's not a good sign for the markets. Where was I on my charts? Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let me get back to where we were. So we looked at SMH. So you can see the situation there. I don't want to belabor the SMH situation. Let's look at X. I looked at XHB. Let's look at the uh, copper, we'll take a look at copper, HG, copper futures. And these were these were defying kind of, you know, we were giving them the benefit of the doubt because you, you, you had to. I mean, they were defying kind of like the logic of, hey, the economy, but there was all the China talk and all that kind of thing. And, you know, now uh, even uh, it looks like it's it switched back to percentages. Let me get rid of that. But uh, now the right this is this is really lost it. It's lost the fifty. The fifty may as well have been your support line as well. So this seems like it's set to drop lower, right? And if that's the case, it kind of finally reflecting maybe more or less what I think about economic realities right now. Um, so that looks a little rough right now. Not a good sign. We did take a look at lumber earlier, but lumber. Uh, did not look all that wonderful. Um, it did have a better Friday, but these are just two key things, right? Keep an eye on for what's happening in the economy. And that's very close to the lowest lows and nowhere near the most recent highs up here. So just, again, just kind of confirmation. And then where is the, oh, XAU. So we did start getting a little worried about XAU and um, the you know gold and silver, and we did see some put buying show up in SLV, and I shared that I think with UOA Pros, of course, 
and also Rebel Pit players. Uh, they were all, I also kind of, I think I noted that for them, maybe in a webinar, but you can see this has really been a big break ever since it broke that support line. It's just been relentless, you know, and the best thing you could say is the RSI readings are low and maybe it's overdone, but maybe if they step in soon, they could still save this and return to a bullish phase. But I think most of that, what was controlled by the bulls is long gone. It's almost exclusively in control of the bears. There's a gap that it could fill. And again, I, I only pay attention when you're heading back and you're getting close and then it may matter. You get somewhere down near there, at least maybe a little bit above, but that's hard to like right now with all the short-term SMAs rolling over, lose going through really even the 200 fairly easily. It only spent two days trying to keep itself above there, then dropped to the 150 spent a day and a half maybe, and then drop below there. So it's just slicing through. Uh, and remember the dollar's been rallying, right? So if you look at the dollar against this, you'll see a pretty decent inverse relationship. So when the dollar <clears throat> does its thing, like it has been over really the last say three weeks, then it makes it tough on the precious metals most of the time. So there you go on that one, right? Where you, this is why I think it pays to look at all these things because Usually you have confirmation on things. Um, one thing I did want to bring up is the uh, some things like IYR. We get requests for TLT, IYR, uh, LQD, HYG, all these different things. Um, and I, I'm not a fan of some of them, but I, I mean I do try to put some trades in on these things uh, because I know that some folks really like the idea of trading them. So I want to be respectful of that and try to get something in there when I can, when I do see UOA, that's interesting. And we have put a couple bearish trades together uh, very recently in those names that I just mentioned, not all of them, but some of them. And so just to cover that, like IYR, we had one, I think it may have expired. I'm not sure if I was able to renew that one, but that's got the 100 day left and that's it. And then this whole sort of bullish counter trend move will have, effectively been un will have unraveled, right? And you can just sort of see that channel. And you're about to lose that big and there's very little left to support it a bit below the 100. Yeah, the course is always going to be probably flat lines in most situations. But at that point, uh, you know, you're you're at bigger risk with no S that you're below virtually every SMA. So there's just a look at things like that. Um, your, <clears throat> your HYG, excuse me, and Mikey, Yamamoto and uh, Chris found a lot of stuff. And Mikey discussed this in uh, Chris Sakura, our EOA team that does a great job uh, finding these opportunities for us to work with. And they, they mentioned how much paper was starting to show up in these things suddenly too. And this also, right, if, you, if you're if you objective about this, I think you could just say, okay, well, I'm going to put a, put a line in from that big reversal candle and we're going to come across here and there's my, you know, there's my support at the lower end of my channel that I've been in. And that, again, this is all working out in a way, I think that should concern you if you're a bull, that you're about to leave there. And if you leave there, then you start start wondering, well, if there's a test of the lows, do they hold? That kind of a thing. LQD, I'm fairly sure that I got an idea in on that one. And these are big movers, which is one reason why I'm kind of reluctant to put them in. I like to find things when I can that I think are have a chance to be big, big movers. So we get that outsized performance, but you know, some people like to trade a grinder. You know, some people prefer that grinding, let me just slowly roll and trim or whatnot. Um, and there, this, this is, this has lost its way. It's lost support. It's got very little left there in LQD in terms of dropping lower big gap, obviously too which that really forced my hand. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's visually, it looks terrible, but it's it's only a few points. But now, of course the options are always reflective or should say usually reflective of this these facts. And so you can get very cheap options to play the game with. And that's great too. I just like to get into the things that I think are really going to move. And then uh, that with good consistent movement, 
And uh, that way people can get in, get out in a market where I think it's going to make a lot of sense to be a singles with an occasional doubles player, unless we just blow through support levels. But you can see that almost everything we looked at uh, looks challenged, right? The commodities look, oh, let's take a look. By the way, we should take a look. I should have taken a look at uh, the uh, oil futures when we were on XLE. So that's my bad. But you can see everything sort of shaping up as challenged you know where you're not too far off the lows here in the uh light sweet crude oil future right now um this has not been acting all that well we were wondering if the xle was out of step or you know what was going on there for the longest time xle is flashing vulnerability there's some more i think some bearish paper that sort of came in to uh, EOA in terms of the uh, XLE components and things like that. But, you know, that's basing, which is good. Um, 46 on the RSI, kind of neutral that way. Um, but that, you know, the, overall the sector, <clears throat> XLE has been in control, excuse me, of, it's been in control of uh, the bulls for quite a while, but they've slowly but surely let that grip slip away. And I think the bears just continue to assert themselves. And I think you're really close. I mean, this is very close to losing the 200. That would be the last of the SMAs. Um, I'm not so worried about the Bollinger Bands having an excursion below the lower band because uh, the bands are pretty narrow right now based off of this extended consolidation we've been stuck with. There's a gap down here that could be filled as well. That's down quite a bit from where we are. So, you know, I, I think you I think you have to be on the defensive here. Uh, let's hope the 200 creates a little short term double bottom for those folks that are bulls out there. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that it will, but let's just hope that it, it does for the bulls. But I, I think you have to be ready to play some defense in there if you're a bull. Um, it's very if you I should say if you crack below and close below that 200 day. That just you know, that's often there's often fake outs when you go below very widely followed moving averages. For example, 100 is that dashed white, barely below they reverse, right? Just barely below they reverse. You could see it over and over again on the 100 right there. And that this is what they do. You know, that these guys are great at barely exceeding highs or lows or critical support levels and then reversing them. They almost always do it. I shouldn't say always, but let's say very frequently they'll do that the first time around too. Uh, like it's clockwork, you know, how well, it's the first time it's almost like it's the rule. Well, let's barely exceed this support level and then we'll reverse this. After all, it's the first time we're doing that. Um, that see, that's why I, I've noticed that. And that's why I'm in most cases, I'm expecting support to effectively hold the first time and then see what kind of a bounce you get out of it. That's why I'll manage my positions that way um, in, in accordance with that. But um, then you have to see what happens from there. And if it doesn't look good again, you can always reestablish your full position or whatnot. Uh, but anyway, that's just a little bit of a share that way. But you can see that just going through every sector, it's been risk off. I think there's they're really close to being tested. Uh, they've got to got to step up very soon, really probably Monday, Tuesday, to make sure they don't risk any more technical damage being done. Otherwise, right, we're we're set up, I think, to lose the most obvious and key support levels that that a lot of folks follow. And that that to me could lead to a, a capitulatory phase. Um, according to the third presidential year, we should weaken early and they should then support this market to start March and then go from there. That's the analog that's probably been tracked the most closely that I can find. And so that means that maybe you do see some weakness and then we get some kind of a turnaround uh, midweek and then finish better and start the new month off on a better note. But uh, so that they do at least the bulls at least do have that going for them to this point. But if it, if we break from that analog and it just things just get slaughtered, you know, then I think it's, uh oh, you know, kind of like all, all bets are at least temporary, temporarily off. For the year in terms of the third presidential year and that typical performance which is the best of the four years in the presidential cycle and it's not even close it's nearly double the next best one from what we can from what we can tell on uh, the research that we've done the sources that we found so i think on that i'm going to just summarize and say 
singles and doubles, if, if they unless they break this market below the key technicals and your index, your sector ind indices do the same thing, right? The sector ETFs we're talking about, if they do the same and the major indexes do the same, because everything looks really rough right now, everything looks challenged. I would, unless they let it go, right? Really start plumbing new lows, and it's there's just no bids, and then and the news isn't supportive of any kind of a turnaround. I would then start going for more to the downside that you could get some bigger runs to the downside. But until they crack it, I would trade pretty tight, looking for singles and doubles, an occasional double here or there, and expect it to be volatile uh, for now, and then see where things take us. But uh, this, the, the final note would just be. There's a lot. the The bulls have their work cut out for them. You know, they 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 don't if they don't step up soon, a lot of these things are going to be in even worse shape, and they're already looking pretty rough as it stands right now. So I hope something I've shared with you today can help you in this upcoming trading week, and and or in the future at some point. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I'll be in touch through all the usual channels and updates. Thank you.